Hello everybody and welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be looking at the anode heel effect. We'll see what causes the anode heel effect, what factors we can change in order to reduce the anode heel effect, and then look at how we can use this effect to our advantage when taking radiographs. Now in the last talk we looked at the focal spot and we saw that reducing the anode angle reduced our field size as well as reduced our effective focal spot size. We also saw that our effective focal spot size actually changes throughout our field. The closer we get to the anode side, we get a smaller effective focal spot, and then as we move out towards our cathode side, we get a bigger effective focal spot. Now today we're going to look at the anode heel effect, and I don't want you to get confused with that variation in effective focal spot size and the anode heel effect. So what exactly is the anode heel effect? Well, the anode heel effect describes the variation or the difference in X-ray beam intensity between our anode side and our cathode side of our X-ray beam or of our field. Now this variation in X-ray beam intensity occurs because when we produce X-rays, we're still going to go through this through the process of Bremsstrahlung or characteristic radiation, X-rays are released in 360 degrees. They're isotropic. They're released in all directions. Now, a proportion of those X-rays will head out towards our patient. Those X-rays on the cathode side of our X-ray field have to travel through a relatively shorter distance of the anode than those on the anode side of our X-ray beam field. Now, those that travel through the heel of our anode, this area here is called the heel of our anode, will be attenuated more because they have to travel through a further distance. And that's why this is called the heel effect. The intensity of these x-rays leaving the anode is less than the intensity of those on the cathode side of our field. And that's simply due to the distance that they have to travel through the anode. Now, a common misconception is that our electron beam hits our anode and forms x-rays on the surface of our anode. The x-rays are actually formed within our anode here. And it's because these x-rays have to travel through differential distances, depending on whether they're on the anode or the cathode side, it leads to this variation in x-ray beam intensity. So there are three parameters that we can change in order to manipulate the anode heel effect. Now, the first is the anode angle. You can see that with a larger anode angle, the distance that the anode side of our beam has to travel through the heel of the anode is less than for a smaller anode angle. When we reduce our anode angle, the heel or the effective heel gets bigger here and our anode side of our field has less intensity than it would in a larger anode angle. Reducing that anode angle increases the heel and increases our anode heel effect. So if we want to reduce the anode heel effect in our x-ray field, we can increase our anode angle. The second thing that changes our anode heel effect is what's known as our source to image distance. Our source is where x-rays are produced, where electrons interact with our tungsten in our anode and produce x-rays. That is our source. Our image refers to where the image is created, our detector or our cassette that is detecting x-rays. They've passed through the patient and now they're now hitting our x-ray detector. If you look at the variation here between the start of our detector and the end of our detector, we are almost getting the full spectrum of varied intensities here. If we move that detector away, we increase our source to image distance as we move it away. That variation between this end of our detector and this end of our detector is now less. We are not getting these high energy or high intensity x-rays here, and we've lost some of these low intensity x-rays here. That variation is less. We've reduced our anode heel effect by increasing our source to image distance. Now the last thing that we can do is change our field size. We can do this by a process called collimation, where we remove x-rays on the anode and cathode sides of our field. Now this process, collimation, we're going to go through in two talks time, and we'll see there are multiple benefits to collimation, one of which is reducing the anode heel effect. If we use our entire field here to create our image, our detector will experience the entire range of intensities between our anode and cathode sides. 
if we collimate that beam down to a small region, that differential in intensity is much less if our detector was now detecting all of these X-ray beams. So firstly, we can change our anode angle. Increasing our anode angle reduces our anode heel effect. We can move our detector further away from the source and that will reduce the anode heel effect. And we can collimate or reduce the field size that we expose our patient to and that also will reduce the anode heel effect. Now the anode heel effect is not all bad. We can use it to our advantage. When we are x-raying certain portions of a patient, certain regions in that image will be more dense than other regions. So for here, we can see that our pelvis, which contains our pelvic bones and our pelvic organs, that is more dense than our abdomen, which mainly contains air and some abdominal organs. There's less dense bone here in our abdomen. We can use the more intense part of the beam that has better penetration to go through the more dense part of our patient. The less intense part of the beam, because of the anode heel effect, can then interact with the less dense part of our patient. And the end point of that is that our detector has a more even exposure because the higher intensity beam is interacting with the higher density portion of our patient. This can happen in our foot where our ankle is more dense and more thick than our forefoot and we can place the cathode side of our beam over the ankle. The same happens in mammography where our chest wall is more dense than the periphery of the breast. We can place the dense chest wall on the cathode side of the beam and then as the breast is compressed and gets thinner that goes out towards our anode side of the beam. So that summarizes the anode heel effect in a nutshell. It describes the variation in x-ray beam intensities between the anode and cathode end of our field and it's due to the differential distances that the x-rays have to travel when leaving the anode. The anode part of our beam has to go through a larger part of the anode heel. Now this is a very popular question when it comes to exams and it can be asked in multiple ways, including how does it benefit us, how do we reduce the anode heel effect, and we're often asked to define and explain how the anode heel effect occurs. These are the types of questions that come up in the question bank that I've linked in the first line of the description below. If that's something you're interested in, go and check it out. In our next talk, we're going to cover a process called filtration, a really important process when we're looking at x-ray physics. We can reduce our x-ray dose while simultaneously improving our x-ray image. So I'll see you all in that lecture. Goodbye, everybody.